uh, we're at Dasilevo Gravel Pits today and the work we're doing is for a willow tit and uh, the willow tit is a bird in between size of a blue tit and a great tit so it's only a small little bird uh, and it uh, is one of the most rapidly declining uh, resident birds that we've got in the UK. There's about 3,400 pairs in the UK uh, and so we found out that uh, the, the area from the Wigan to the Greater Manchester area is a hot spot for these birds and uh, this area around Darcy Lever we know that there's birds here already. Uh, we know that they, they're declining substantially because they've lost something like 80% of their uh, population in the last 20 years uh, and there's been lots of research to try and find the, um, the, the reasons for this. One of the reasons could well be habitat loss uh, because we've got competition as well from great tits and blue tits uh, and that's one of the reasons why we're doing the work that you see here. We're in the gravel pits, uh, you could probably see from the background to the side of us it's very wet so we've got a very wet understory. Uh, we've got early successional willows which are over to the to my right hand side over there they love the wet areas they look deadwood they love um, the, the willow elder and also um, things like birch to nest in they will nest in something as small as 50 millimeters diameter up to about 120 millimetres plus. So 120 millimetres is actually the average size of trunk that they will use. They like dead wood uh, because that's easy for their bills. If you think of a woodpecker having a large hammer type bill, the, the willow tit has a very small bill, very similar to the other ticks. So what they need to do is to dig into um, quite dead wood that's been dead for quite some time otherwise you can't excavate only the female excavates it uh, they'll be starting doing that in about March something like that uh, and she will dig into that and it's only once she starts excavating the hole that the, she then becomes sexually active which is, which is something that's been found out by, by recent research so uh, uh, one of the ideas that we've got is to try and produce some more dead wood where we haven't got dead wood before so we've cut down some logs previously these would normally be things like white poplar which is an invasive so we're doing two jobs at once um, and also some of the other invasive species um, that are starting to decay quickly we want the decay to come in two directions so what we're going to do we're going to push it into a tree that we know isn't invasive we're not going to take get rid of this tree here I think one, this one is an oak, um, so we need something that's fairly straight because we're going up right against it with our, our nursery tree. We cut up against it and all we're doing really is we, we, we get our cable ties and we're going to fix it round in two places but it needs to be, if you think of the fork of the roots, it needs to be in between the forks to snuggle in in between those forks at the base. We need to push it down so we've got the base. Uh, the rot is coming up from the bottom and obviously the rot will come in from the top where it's open as well. So I'll do the bottom one, we've got a cable tie there, very very simple. We'll take it into the bottom and then if you can see that we're just going to take it, insert that cable tie and then pull that tie. And that is nice and snug against the existing tree, which is one of the reasons why we try and get two trees that are fairly straight, as you can see from there. We can also take another one at the top, and that would just be a, a secondary one. And then we can pull all these tight and maybe snip off the, the extra bits afterwards and take those away from sight. So it's very, very simple technique. The only thing that we have to do now is to come in with a chainsaw and we found out that the if we start cutting a vertical cut with a chainsaw, at about this sort of height because they're very low dwellers, they will take um, about a metre height as an average height above ground level for the nest. And a vertical cut will actually start them off. 
into the excavation process because any help that we can give them to start off with is going to be absolutely brilliant. So we'll take that off, we'll do a, a vertical cut with a chainsaw after we've completed this and where everything is safe so people aren't working in the same area as a chainsaw. And that basically is very, very snug now. If I tighten each one of these up, that won't move. So that's absolutely brilliant. Another thing that we can show you is um, if Colette can just pass over the piece of paper, we can actually show how small these nests can be. And we've got a picture there of uh, a birch sapling, and that's all it is. And that's only about 60 millimetres wide diameter of that birch. And you can probably see from that there is actually a nest in there that's been excavated uh, by the willow tip and there is actually a young in there. Um, so the young will actually be multi-storey young because it's so narrow. Because you'll get one of the young on top of the other rather than circular around as you'll get in a larger hole. So that is one of the reasons why we have these smaller type logs. Another thing that we do, if we're going to put some um, great tit or blue tit nest boxes, what we'll try and do then is to locate them quite high up. And so you've got a distinction between the great tits and the blue tits, so that the great tits and the blue tits, we, which tend to boss the willow tits, they will not be in competition for these lower areas. Because what we find is that the blue tits try to excavate and then sometimes if a blue tit or a great tit is in the area, they'll boss them out and they will take over that nest. So if we provide bird boxes up at a higher level, then there will be a demarcation line between those more bossy species and the willow tit. So we can do that in combination with, uh, with the work that we're doing. Another thing that you can do is to leave a stump um, at a height that will, and then treat it, cut a cross in the top, put the vertical cut in and that does the same sort of thing as the, the uh, deadwood arrangement that we've got with the cable ties. And in particular one species which is um, reed warbler uh, which wasn't present at Dove Cocker but we've now got 10 to 15 pairs and it's sort of the Burroughs stronghold. Um, they came in very quickly, they seem to be able to have this uncanny ability to find the smallest